So in this video, we'll talk about a problem from Form B of the 2009 AP Calc 8B exam. It's a no calculator question. They describe a function f in the paragraph that's provided here. They tell us that it's twice differentiable on the interval negative 1.2 to 3.2. They tell us what f1 is. Uh, they provide us with the graph of f prime. So the graph of f prime is right here. Uh, and then they tell us a little bit more about that graph of f prime. They tell us where it crosses the x-axis. Makes sense. Negative 1 and 3. And then they tell us where it has a horizontal tangent. It has a horizontal tangent at the x value of 2. Uh, g is a function given by e to the f of x. What they ask us to do in part a here is to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of g at 1. So to build the equation of a tangent line successfully, you're going to need to get two components in place. You're going to need to know the point of tangency, the x-coordinate of it's already provided for you, it's 1, and then you also need the corresponding y-coordinate. Well, since it's a tangent line to the graph of g, we're going to generate the y that corresponds to this x by plugging this x into the function g. And so what's g of 1? Well, it's e to the f of 1. This graph isn't a graph of f, so it's tempting to grab this as the the value to put in that exponent. Uh, f of 1 is actually provided to us up in the paragraph there. f of 1 is 2. And so there's the completed point of tangency. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need the slope of that tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line to g evaluated at 1 is going to be g prime of 1. So if you take the derivative of g of x, what you're going to have to use is you're going to have to use a chain rule. Right? So the derivative of the outer function would be e to the same inner function and then times the derivative of the inner function, which is f prime of x. We need to evaluate this derivative at 1 to generate the appropriate slope. So we put 1 in place of this x, we put 1 in place of this x, and what we end up with after doing so is e to the f of 1 times f prime of 1. Well, f of 1 we already utilized. f of 1 is 2, right? So I just put 2 in that exponent on the base e, and then f prime of 1, well, we can actually grab that from the graph. This is a graph of f prime, and at the x value of 1, the, the f prime value, the y value on this graph at that location is negative 4. So here's the slope of our tangent line. If you use point slope form to build the equation of the line, here is your result. If you did slope intercept form, that's fine too. Just a little nicer and easier to leave it in point slope. In part B, they ask us to figure out where x has a lo excuse me, where g has a local maximum on the interval negative 1.2 to 3.2, and then it says to justify your answer. So, uh, what I think when I read the directions, find where we have a local maximum, is I want to build a sign chart for the function I'm trying to determine that characteristic about. So I'm going to build a sign chart for g prime. If if I know what the sine of g prime is on each of the intervals of this stretch of the x-axis, I should have a pretty easy time developing my conclusion. I just can't overlook this justification piece at the end here. So we already had g prime from part A, right? There's that result from the chain rule from the prior slide. And whenever you're building a sign chart for g prime, you're going to need to know when g prime has the opportunity to change signs. Well, g prime is only going to ever be able to change signs is if we pass a critical number. So places where g prime is equal to zero or places where g prime is undefined, e to a power is never undefined, and f prime is never undefined on the interval negative 1.2 to 3.2. So I don't have to worry about any locations where the derivative is undefined, but I do want to set this derivative equal to zero. Uh, the nice thing about doing this is that it's actually already factored, right? It's e to the f of x times f prime of x. If I set this first factor equal to zero, e to a power is never equal to zero. I don't get anything from setting that first factor equal to zero. But if I set the second factor equal to zero, zero equals f prime of x, I actually can use the graph of f prime to, to get the solutions to that pretty quickly, right? This graph is equal to zero at negative one. This graph is equal to zero at positive three. They provided that for us in the directions there. So what can you say about the sign of g prime on each side of negative one and three, and then in between those values? So here's g prime again, and think about the product that represents g prime. It's e to a power e to a power is only ever going to be a positive value. So this is always positive. So if I have a positive here times f prime of x, 
whatever the sine of f prime of x is, that's also going to be the sine of g prime, right, since this is always positive. So I look at this graph of f prime, which is slightly above the x axis to the left of negative 1. So a positive times a positive gives me a positive sign for g prime on that interval. In between negative 1 and 3, this graph is now dipped below the x-axis. We have negative values for f prime on that stretch. A positive times a negative gives us a negative result. And then on the other side of 3, we're back to positive values on this graph. So back to a positive times a positive for g prime. And think about what this tells us about g. g is increasing, decreasing, increasing. That tells us we have our local minimum, excuse me, our local maximum at x equals negative 1. Now the justification can't be the sign chart to satisfy the, the AP uh, grading requirements here. So you're going to have to just kind of elaborate what you have used logically to develop that conclusion based on this sign chart. So I have a nice little concluding statement here. Since g prime of negative 1 is 0 and g of x transitions from increasing to decreasing at the x value of negative 1, g of x is going to have a local max at that x. If we look at part c, part c is pretty sneaky because what they give us is they give us g double prime of x. They didn't have us try to find this. They just provide it to us. And then they say is g double prime of negative 1 positive, negative, or 0? Justify your answer. Now you can try to put negative 1 in place of these x's and, and try to reason it out and maybe eventually solve some sort of inequality to decide if, if this is positive or negative. Uh, but what is actually useful to use here is the second derivative test. So what the second derivative test says is if you have a situation where your graph has a horizontal tangent line and attains a local maximum, your graph has to be concave down on that interval. Well, if your graph's concave down, the second derivative has to be negative. If you have a situation where your graph has a horizontal tangent line and you have a local max, what you're guaranteed has to happen is your second derivative is going to have to be positive at that location so that the graph is concave up in order to attain that local minimum. Well, in, in part C, we're asked about the location that we dealt with in part B. We proved in part B that G has a local maximum at this X. So since G prime has that maximum at negative 1 and G, excuse me, since G has that maximum at negative 1 uh, and G prime at negative 1 is 0. By the second derivative test, we have to have a graph that's concave down at that x value. And if the graph's concave down at that x value, our second derivative has to be negative in order to attain that local ma maximum like we concluded with in part c. So kind of sneaky there using the second derivative test to develop that conclusion. Uh, and then in the last part, we're asked to find the average rate of change of g prime on the interval 1 to 3. So an average rate of change is simply the slope of a secant line. An instantaneous rate of change is a tangent slope. An average rate of change is a secant slope. So we need to know what the secant slope to this graph is, g prime, on the interval 1 to 3. So it's just a normal slope calculation, but we're applying the slope calculation to, to g prime. And so we're going to have g prime of 3 minus g prime of 1 in that numerator, right, the difference of y values on this graph at the x's that we're asked to use for the numerator. And then in the denominator, it's just going to be the difference in x values, 3 minus 1. Well, 3 minus 1 is obviously 2. And then we've got a little bit of work to do to figure out what's going on within this numerator. So we've already utilized g prime a couple times throughout this problem. And so here it is copied onto this screen as well. And we want to now know what g prime of 3 is. So if I'm trying to find g prime of 3, I'm putting 3 in place of this x. I'm putting 3 in place of this x. So I'm going to have e to the f of 3 times f prime of 3. I don't really know what f of 3 is, right? The only function value they give us for f is at 1. So this is a little concerning, the fact that we have to leave this f of 3 here. Until you look at what you can do when you try to find f prime of 3. This is a graph of f prime. f prime of 3 is the y value from this graph at this location. That y value is 0. 0 times whatever this positive value is, is going to be 0. So we get 0 for g prime of 3. g prime of 1, that was actually our slope from back in part A. So the slope that we had from part A was negative 4 e to the second power. So if I try to simplify that a little bit, I end up with 2e squared 
Uh, on the AP exam, you can leave answers unsimplified. This expression right here that now depends solely on numbers would have received full credit, uh, as would if I would have left 3 minus 1 in that denominator. I don't have to do even that really simple bit of arithmetic, changing this difference into 2. I could have left that as 3 minus 1. But uh, final answer would be what you see at the end of the line right here. Uh, AP grading you would be able to get away with this. You wouldn't be able to get away with this because this doesn't depend on numerical values. It depends on G prime still.